Hello everyone and welcome to Talking Over Tea. Today, Amelia and I are going to be talking about our five favorite books that we have read in 2020 so far. So Maddie's going to start us off with her first book. So we looked through all of the books we've read so far and we picked our five favorite and my first is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This book is about Jane Eyre who is an orphan and is abused by her relatives who eventually goes to work for Mr. Rochester as a governess. Some themes that I saw in Jane Eyre that I really liked are forgiveness and doing what's right even when you don't want to and Jane has to make a choice at one point in the book where she has to do what is right or she does what she wants to do. I kind of saw Jane and Mr. Rochester as parallels where they both had bad things happen to them in their past but they both chose a different path and it really made me aware that our actions are choices and it's not about everything that happened to us in our past to dictate what we're going to be doing now. And I thought Jane was a very good role model for us today even though it was, the book was written so long ago. So the first book that I'm going to be talking about is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I first read this book for school and it took me a while to get into it, but once I got to the end, I really liked it and I really liked how it showed sacrifice so prominently in the story. This has a lot going on in this book. Uh, it's kind of hard to keep up and I was reading through um, a summary of it and I was realizing how much I'd forgotten already. This book is set in France and England during the French Revolution. So the main character of this book is Charles Darnay, who is accused of being a traitor to the British. But he gets taken off trial because there is someone who looks just like him whose name is Sidney Carton. Even though they look exactly the same, they kind of have opposite personalities. And people say that Charles Darnay is what Sidney Carton would want to be. They both fall in love with Lucy Minette, and she ends up liking Charles Darnay. But Sidney Carton tells her that if she's ever in help or her friends and family are in need of something, he will be there to help her. And this ends up kind of tying in at the end but I don't want to spoil too much. Because this is set in the French Revolution, it is very violent and there's a lot of guillotining, but I still really like this book and I think it's my favorite Charles Dickens book out of all that I've read so far. So my second book is The Autobiography of George Mueller and it was written in 19, or it was published in 1905. It's pretty much just his journal over the years and from reading this book it kind of seems like we underestimate God's power a lot because George Mueller did not have a paying job he but he supported hundreds and hundreds of orphans just by praying and by God's help and it taught me a lot about prayer and faith in God and that God can do so much more than I feel like we think a lot less that you can do a lot less sometimes one thing that George Mueller really tried to stress was that he wasn't extraordinary, he wasn't any different than anybody, and that with faith, anyone can live like he did. I rarely read nonfiction, and especially biographies, so this was a new experience for me. It's something I've never really read before, but it did teach me a lot, and it was just amazing to see what God can do. So I really recommend this book. My next book is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. It was published in 1908 and it follows the story of Mole, Rat, Toad, and Badger. I don't really like animal books. Something mm -hmm. about them is just really annoying, but I liked how it just felt more like they were people. This book begins with Mole, who is very tired of his spring cleaning, and he runs off and meets Rat. And they go on a lot of adventures together. But near the beginning of the book, they meet Toad, who's a very uncommitted character, and he likes to find new hobbies very often. And what I really didn't like about this book is that so much of it is about Toad, and it ends up that his house gets taken over by weasels. <laughs> uh, I think it's weasels. <laughs> and it's kind of their quest to like get it back and fight them out of his house. And it shows a lot of how these are very loyal friends, because even though Toad is very horrible, they're very A loyal to example. him, and they stick with him to help him, even when he's very unappreciative. <laughs> One thing is that he always says he's going to change. He goes mm. through these very dramatic times where he's like, oh, I will change, <laughs> and then he doesn't end up changing, and that's pretty annoying. <laughs> so she has read it as well. 
read. And yes, I, I also don't usually like animal books, but this <laughs> one was just, I don't know, it was just fun and uh, it was like delightful and it was mm -hmm. written very well. It wasn't just like a kind of dumb children's book. Yeah. With a lot of children's books, especially classics, it kind of seems like nothing, not very much happens. Like this was very fast paced and it was very easy to read. Mm -hmm. Like Amelia said, I really liked the themes of friendship and of sticking together, even if someone is not appreciative and isn't loyal to you, to just be with them and to help them. And even though this is a children's book, I would recommend it to those of any age. My next book is another biography, and it's The Hiding Place by Cory Ten Boom. The Hiding Place follows Cory Ten Boom and her family as they hide Jews in Holland. And they are eventually uh, caught and taken to concentration camps. And it is sad, but it is also a book that is filled with hope. Some of the things that I really liked about it was the themes of being thankful, even in the very tough and hard times, and also to love your enemies, to love the people that are treating you terribly. And I'm not quite certain if this quote was uh, in the hiding place. I know part of it was, but maybe not the whole thing. But I thought it just kind of captured what the Ten Booms were trying to do and how they were trying to live their lives. So it's from Wikipedia, so I'm gonna read it real quick. When Cory's father, Casper Ten Boom, was interrogated in prison, the Gestapo told him that they would release him because of his old age so that he could die in his own bed. He replied, If I go home today, tomorrow I will open my door to anyone who knocks for help. When asked if he knew he would die for helping Jews, he replied, I would consider that the greatest honor that could come to my family. And that just, to me, that kind of encapsulated what the Ten Booms did in their lives, and I just thought that was really meaningful and I really liked it. My next book is Anne's House of Dreams by Ellen Montgomery. There's not much I can really say about this book. It kind of follows the same kind of pattern as the other books. You have Anne going somewhere new and meeting new characters and just kind of what happens during that era of her life. And this one she moves to her new house in Four Winds Point. It's a rather slow paced book but I would definitely recommend this book to anyone who has liked the previous books and likes that kind of imaginative <laughs> and poetic kind of writing that is always in the L. M. Montgomery books that I've read so far. My fourth book is The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. And I read this one for school, but this is a book that seems like it should be really boring, but somehow it's not. <laughs> this book is about a butler named Stevens who lives, it, it's set in like two different time periods. So there's the present time, which is like the 1950s and then the, um, he, re he does lots of talking about his past, uh, so that is set in the 1930s. Stevens is the typical British butler that most people would think of. He's very dignified and royal, and he's, he doesn't understand um, banter or what he calls witticisms, and it is written in that kind of dry sort of non-emotional way, but somehow it just it's just really interesting at the same time. So he is going on a journey to talk to the former housekeeper, Miss Kenton. They both worked in Mr. Darlington's household. Some of the themes are dignity and loyalty and what it means to be a good man. And Mr. Darlington is someone who's kind of he is kind of a Nazi sympathizer and during his time working for him and the times that he's reflecting back on his life, Stevens is wondering if it matters who you work for and if it matters that he went along with, with Mr. Darlington even though he didn't quite think that what he was doing was right. And it really focuses on what it means to be a good man or a good person or a good butler. My next book is called A Mill and the Detectives by Erich Kästner. It's a German book and the German title is Emil und die Detektive. This book was written in 1929 and it follows Emil on his journey 
to take this money to his grandma. I read the English version of this book, but I hope one day that I could read the original German version. Uh, this book is set in Berlin, and Emil's mother works as a hairdresser, and she doesn't make very much money. But they finally save money to send to Emil's grandmother, so he's going to take it to her on a train. And as he's going, the money gets stolen, and the whole book is his adventure on getting the money back. Emil meets Gustav, who is a boy about his age, and together them, and also a bunch more children, who call themselves the detectives, go and try to get the money back. I really liked this book because it wasn't quite your normal children's book. It, it was very fast-paced and a lot was going on. An interesting thing about this book is that it's set in our world because in that time it was more normal for authors who wrote children's book to write it in a kind of fantasy world. I'd seen this book even before I was learning German at the library before and wasn't really sure what it was, but now I'm very glad that I read it because it was very entertaining and it also helped me see a little more about German culture at that time in the 1930s. My last book is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dower, who actually lives in Idaho, which is interesting. And this one is going to be a bit hard to talk about. It's quite complicated and intricate and, and it jumps back in time, back and forward in time a lot, so it can be a little confusing on what time period it is. But it follows two children. Uh, Werner is a German orphan and Marie Laure is a French, she's French and she's blind and it kind of follows their paths. It starts off with them not knowing each other, they live in different places, but then eventually about in the middle they, they meet. I don't have a lot to say about this, it is just, it's very beautifully, beautifully written. One little theme that I kind of picked up on was the potential that we have and how in this case, the war got in the way of Vanner's potential to do something great, and uh, he kind of got, his greatness got used for fighting on the German side. I just thought that this book was beautiful, and if you haven't read yet, I would definitely read it, but I would like to say it is for more of an older audience. It has some cursing and some things that I don't think are that good, but when you ignore all that, it is just really beautiful, and I really like it. My last book is called The Chosen by Hayim Potok. I read this book for school, and I had never heard of this book. I probably never would have read it just by reading the back. Um, it's about two Jewish boys living in America. One is ultra-Orthodox Hasidic, and the other is just an Orthodox Jew. This book starts with a baseball game, and the main character, Reuben Malt, gets hit in the eye with the baseball that was thrown by Danny Saunders who becomes his friend later on in the story. Because of the boy's difference in Jewish groups, their fathers don't agree on things, and at one point they aren't allowed to talk to each other anymore because Danny's father is hes very controlling and very devout to what he believes. For being a book that mainly talks about studying and <laughs> going to college and school, it was pretty interesting. One thing that goes on during this book um, is that Reuben's father believes that a, Jew a new Jewish state should be set up because this takes place during World War II Holocaust era and Danny's father believes that that should not happen so this is when they become separated and are not allowed to speak to each other anymore. And the book really shows that if you let differences get in the way of your friendships you're gonna lose people and relationships that are very important in your life. This book was really interesting to me because I really didn't know a lot about Jewish culture and it was interesting for a book to be set in America when it's going on during this time. Though it's not a book that I would put on my all-time favorite shelf, I still found it very interesting to read about and learn about a different culture. So those were our favorite books that we have read so far this year, and we hope to read many, many more books that become some of our favorites. Thank you for watching this video, and we hope to see you in two weeks for our next post.
And I'll be like, <laughs> and you're like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and my first book is Charlotte Bronte, but. Charlotte Bronte, Bronte. <laughs> 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 <laughs>